Hi everyone, welcome to Simply Learn's YouTube channel and in this particular session, we will understand breadth first search or BFS and depth first search or DFS algorithms in data structures. But before we begin, make sure that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and don't forget to hit that bell icon to never miss an update from Simply Learn. Now without further ado, let's get started with the agenda for today's discussion. So we will begin with understanding what exactly is breadth first search algorithm. Then we will look into an example based on breadth first search algorithm. Followed by that, we will learn what is depth first search algorithm and we will look into an example for depth first search algorithm. After that, we will discuss the fundamental differences between DFS and BFS. And finally, we will go through some major applications of DFS and BFS. At first, we will discuss breadth first search algorithm. So what exactly is breadth first search algorithm? So breadth first search algorithm visits every node efficiently and marks all the nodes which are adjacent to that particular node. The critical nodes in the graph are in a breadth wise manner. Breadth first search starts traversing from root node and then selects all the unvisited adjacent nodes of the selected node. Q data structure is used to implement BFS algorithm. So here you can see a GIF which is explaining about BFS algorithm. So let us consider that we have selected the root node as one. Then it will check for all possible adjacent nodes. So it will traverse to two, then it will traverse to three. After that, it doesn't have any adjacent nodes. So the control moves to either one of the child nodes, that is two or three. So let us consider that we go to two. And from two, it will check for all the adjacent nodes, that is four and five and there are no other adjacent nodes from 2. Then it will go to 4. It can also go to 5, but here let us consider that it goes to 4. So from 4, it does not have anything to traverse. So it gets back to 2, then it goes to 5. And from 5, it checks for the traversal. There is only one possibility, that is 7, and no other explorations. Then it goes to 7, and there is no other possibility for 7 as well. So it comes back to 5, then to 2, then to 1, and then it enters the second child node, that is the 3. From the 3, it moves to another possibility that is 6 and it checks for another possibility but there is no possibility. So now the control moves from 3 to 6. From 6, it tries to visit the adjacent nodes. So 6 has only one adjacent node that is 8 and no other adjacent nodes. And now from 6, it goes to 8. And from 8, it checks for any other adjacent nodes but there is no other adjacent node. So it gets back to 6, then 3, then to 1, back. So this is how the control traverses when you are implementing breadth first search algorithm. Now here, let us look into an example for breadth first search algorithm. As discussed in the previous example, here the root node is selected first. Then it goes to B. Then it goes to C. And it checks for any other adjacent node. But there is no other adjacent node other than B and C. So the control moves to B. And from B, it starts traversing to all its adjacent nodes. First, it traverses to D, then to E. And it checks for any other possibility, but there is no other possibility. So, the control goes back to B, then to A, and from A, it traverses to C. And from C, it checks for all the adjacent nodes, that is F and G. So, it checks for other possibilities. Since there is no other possibility, it goes through F, and from F, it checks for other possibilities, but there are no other possibilities from F. So the control gets back to C and then finally to G. And in G, it checks for any adjacent nodes. Since there is no adjacent node from G, it stops there and we have the Q output here. That is A, B, C, D, E, F and G. So this is how the breadth first search algorithm works. Now to understand this in a practical way, let us try to execute a program in Dev C++. So now we are on Dev C++ and the program on my screen is an example for BFS algorithm. In this program, we have a queue first as BFS is executed using queue data structure. And there are two variables that is rear and front. And there is one array named as size and the size is defined here as 50. Next, we created some functions. First, there is a queue function to create a queue. Then we have nq and dq to insert and delete the element from the queue.
So this is the NQ function and this is the DQ function to insert and delete the elements from the queue. Then we have a function to display and after that we have the empty function to check whether a queue is empty or not. So this particular code segment is to check whether the queue is empty or not. And this particular function is the print function which is used to print the elements inside the queue. After that, we defined node and made a function as creating a node and in node there is a one variable named as vertex and one pointer next to it. So this is the structure for creating the node and followed by the node we have created another structure called graph and inside graph we have the create graph function to create the graphs and we have number of vertices adjacent lists and visited and next we have the add edge where we will add edges in between the vertices and finally we have the BFS algorithm. So here we will check if the queue is empty or not first, then we will call the DQ function and we will execute the BFS algorithm. And now finally we have the main function where we will add all the edges to the graph and call the BFS algorithm. Now let's try to run this program and see the output. So there you go, the program got successfully executed and the output is displayed on the screen. So Q contains the values that is 0 Q, reset node is visited to 0 and then Q contains values 2 and 1, now the node is visited to 2, followed by that the Q has values 1 and 4 and node has visited 1 and then Q contains values 4 and 3 and node has visited the value or vertex 4 and finally Q contains value 3 and the Q is reset and the node is currently visited at node number 3. Now with that let's move ahead into the next type of algorithm that is the depth first search algorithm. So what is depth first search algorithm? So DFS algorithm is used for traversing trees using the depth wise direction. The execution of this algorithm begins with the root node and explores each branch before backtracking. Next DFS uses stack data structure to remember to get a subsequent vertex and start a search whenever a dead node appears or the dead end appears at any iteration. Now we used to have queues in BFS algorithm but in DFS algorithm we will be using stacks. Now to understand the working of depth first search let us go a bit more detail. So here we have a graph. So how depth first search algorithm works? Now here we can choose the root node first. So once the root node is chosen it sees the possibilities of traversal. It starts from the left side tree first. It first visits B and now it will not stop at B. In BFS, it used to stop at B and used to check all the possibilities. But here it is not like that. It will first visit B, then it will not stop at B. It directly sees the depth of the B, that is, it has another child node. So it will enter the left child node and checks D. And now here it will not stop at D. It will check for possibilities at D. So since there are no possibilities from the left or right side of D, it will get back to B and now it will check for another possibility from B that is right side. First it finishes the left subtree on completion of left subtree only then it will enter the right subtree. So here it checks for the possibility it found E and from E it will check for another depth search so there is no depth search from E and not on left and not on right so it comes back to B. From B it visits the root node again. From here it checks for the right subtree now. Here we have C, so it will not stop at C, it will go to the next subtree that is F. And now it will not stop at F, it will search for other opportunities. Now since there is no other opportunity or other vertex from F, it gets back to C. And after that, it checks for next right subtree that is G. So 
from G, it looks for another opportunity or vertex. Since there is no other vertex, it gets back to C, then to A. So to keep the traversal in order, it uses stack data structure. Now for a better understanding, let us go through a practical demo on Dev C++. And now we are on Dev C++ and this particular code is an example for DFS algorithm. In this particular code, we have defined the structure that is node and inside the node structure, we have this vertex and node reference, which points to the next node in the graph. Followed by that, we have the graph structure and inside graph structure, we have the number of vertices and visited and reference to each node. Followed by that, we have the depth first search algorithm. And this particular code segment is the logic for depth first search algorithm. Then we have the structure of node reference and followed by that we have the structure of graph reference that is the number of vertices visited and the adjacent vertex list and then the reference if that particular node is visited or not. Now we are using dynamic memory allocation here and followed by that we have add edge function where we will add edges between the vertices and followed by that we have the print graph function so here we will be printing the stack data structure which has the vertex after visiting all the vertices in the graph and finally we have our main function where we will assign the edges to the graph then we will call the depth first search algorithm now let's try to execute this code and see the output there you go you can see that the code got successfully executed and we have our list here that is we have visited the vertex 2 3 1 and 0 now followed by this let us look into the differences between breadth first search and depth first search algorithms so some of the fundamental differences are breadth first search finds the shortest path to the destination whereas depth first search goes to the bottom of the subtree and then backtracks the next difference is BFS algorithm uses a queue to keep track of the following locations to visit whereas DFS algorithm uses stack now we have gone through that in the examples for both DFS and BFS followed by that the next difference is the BFS uses FIFO that is first in first out order of implementation because we are using queue data structure here whereas DFS uses last in first out order of implementation because we are using stack data structure the next difference is BFS requires more memory as compared to DFS and depth first search requires less memory compared to that of BFS followed by that we have BFS algorithm which gives the shallowest path to the solution next compared to BFS DFS algorithm does not guarantee for shallowest path as the solution the next difference is in BFS algorithm, if you do not find any goal, then you may need to expand to the other nodes before the solution is found. Whereas in DFS, if you do not find any goals, then the backtracking will start from the leaf node. Now we will discuss some of the major applications of BFS algorithms. So BFS algorithm can be easily used to create the shortest path and the minimum spanning tree to visit the graph vertices in the shortest time possibly with high accuracy. BFS algorithm is implemented to locate all the neighboring nodes in peer-to-peer -peer network and this will find the required data faster. Search engine or web crawlers can quickly build multiple levels of indexes by employing BFS algorithm and start implementing from the source and then it visits all the links from the source. The BFS algorithm guides the broadcast packet to find and reach all the node it has for the address. Now we will look into the applications of DFS. The next application of DFS is, it is primarily used for scheduling jobs for the given dependencies among the group of jobs. In computer science, it is used for instruction scheduling, data serialization and compilation task ordering. Next, the DFS algorithm can be easily adapted to search all solutions to a maze including nodes in an existing path in the visited set. Now with that, we have come to an end of the session on BFS and DFS algorithms. If you need the course executed in this particular session, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below with your email IDs and we will have it sent to your email IDs.
If you have any queries regarding the topics covered in this session, then please feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be happy to resolve all your queries. Until next time, thank you, stay safe and keep learning. Hi there, if you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.